Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. Yes, Dev Chanel, it's 4 World, and we're going to get right on into... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The season nine, episode two. It was called the Beauty Shop, and today's episode mostly really catered to Doctor Heavenly, and what she was doing, big things, uh, new career, being the owner of a beauty salon shop. Well, really a beauty shop. Cause I don't think they do, or maybe they could do. So ends. I think she does do so ends and probably watch hair too and get it together for the woman experience, uh, a women experience of you know getting their hair taken care of. So she's like a one stop shop, and uh, it, the episode mostly was featured around her and a little bit of the other cast members. But this one right here, Anila, child, she thinks she got it all. She thinks she is the it factor. And I was so glad that Nanny, because at first I thought it was maybe a family member taking care of her kids. But as it went on, um, I got the impression that uh, she was just a help, in other words. And I'm like, okay, all right. I wouldn't fix no full course dinner for them. Just to break it to them that you wanted to leave, that you wanted to go to Texas and be with your family and uh, and leave this career thing behind you. So I guess you made enough money over here in the States. Now she want to go leave or no, she's not. She's still in the States. She's going to be going back home to Houston, Texas, I think is what I got the gist of that conversation. But Paul uh, Anila and her husband, they were looking like, oh, no, you did. Oh, no, you didn't give us but a minute's notice. Are you kidding me? Because at first, Anila told her husband, I guess she wants a raise. And I said, I hope you're paying her real good. Like maybe $20 an hour to be watching your kids. Okay? Because they seem like they're a handful. They seem like they're a handful. So, uh, <laughs> they had a show a little part about, uh, they were telling the kids that she... She was no longer going to be with them. And the little boy was just like somewhat uh, sad. And then he was like, okay, who's the new one? Which I thought was a shame and a scandal. But yeah, Nyla was pretty much like, you can't leave us. What are we going to do? And I'm like, girl, was the nanny there to pull the baby out your behind or belly or for JJ, was she there to do that? Okay, well, she wasn't, then yes, you can do without her. It's called putting on your mother's hat, your mommy's hat, however you see yourself to your kids, and making sure they're taken care of. That's a mother's job. Now, do will you have to give up your influencing job that you do on YouTube by sampling uh, name brand clothes and, and giving it a thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever? Uh, you're going to have to make that do with surround that around your kids' time. Because why did you have two kids if you weren't going to be in their life? And you just want to be a part-time something. I don't know because your husband, yeah, he got to be out there working. He's a doctor. He can make it do what it would do. And actually, you can be a housewife and do this influencer thing on the side. It's not that hard. Most women who are in the YouTubing or podcasting or whatever, being an inf influencer, you just have to make it do with it too. But she was just trying to make the nanny feel some kind of way for the negative. I'm like, shit, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't have made no dinner. I, you know, if it was dinner that I had to make as one of my chores, 
the new best sample. And then I would just went on about my business. Because <laughs> believe it or not, the kids will adapt. They will move on. It's almost like when they go to school, they have to leave first grade to get to second grade. They don't want to do it. But then once they get in there, they get acclimated with the situation. Then they, they, they uh, are all the way in. You know what I'm saying? They ain't missing no points or anything. They just knew they had to leave one to go to two. Two to go to three, and it just keeps developing. She was a part of their life for a long time, but that's a good training tool that everything is not going to stay the same 100% of the time. You may be lucky. You may be blessed to get more time with certain things, but everybody has this expiration time. Okay? So that was a cute little scene. Um, then we got Contessa. And Dr. Heaven is still fussing, still going at it. And to me, it seems like Contessa has been more, a little bit more dramatic and emotional than Dr. Heavenly. Dr. Heavenly don't have patience. She can listen to you full-fledged. She can offer her advice and whatnot. But she's not the one to keep come saying the same thing over and over about the problems you're having in your marriage, Contessa. So, to me, it's like, you need to get it together. Either you're going to be the man, I mean, be the woman that your man wants you to be, or you're not. It's okay. You can survive. You can be a divorcee. It's not that bad of a, of a deal if you want your peace of mind, okay? A peace of mind can make you do strange things, okay? But just to have that peace of mind would be the best thing for you. It's not going to work against you. But you don't need to be with somebody that's tearing you down mentally. You see what I'm saying? So I get heavily on that front. Contessa just pretty much want to talk a good game but don't want to follow through. Because she's scared of raising three kids by herself. But then on the same token, he when it's his time to keep the children, he's going to have to do it himself as well. And to tell you the truth, both of y'all are getting else for parenting. Because y'all don't want to take the responsibility of raising the children. So basically, um, Contessa tells Toya that uh, Heavenly has definitely been talking uh, uh, talking about her over on her YouTube channel. Now, of course, Toya has brought herself over to uh, Contessa's house while she's out there playing with her kids. Uh, homie girl, Toya show up. Okay, nice ride. She riding in. Ooh, Lord. But I like, honey, I, I really don't know what is really wrong with Toya's husband, Eugene. I mean, he just seems like a bump on the law. He seems very passive. And he's going to give himself a heart attack. Because Toya is just pushing him too hard, too fast. And he don't get a break. But again, he need to open up his damn mouth and say what he going to do, what he ain't going to do. And she either told the line or she go on about her business. But it seems like more women are running men than ever. You know, this, this is too much. So... It's going to be a blowing part for him. And he's going to have to learn to definitely stand up to his wife and stop letting her run the show. Because Toya has, for as long as I've been watching um, Married of Medicine, really from the induction of the sitcom, all the way up probably to maybe season, hmm, probably season five or seven. And then I just lost interest because it kept being the same old mess. You know, Toya is fussing with Dr. Heavenly. Uh, or Simone is fussing with Dr. Heavenly because of the friendship that she has with Jackie. Woo, child. I had really thought that they had got it together. But Miss Nyla, she don't like Toya for whatever reason. We don't really know. <laughs> Other than they both like spending money and they don't want to spend time with their children. Even though Toya can definitely get out and get another job. So Mr. Eugene don't have to work so hard. But Toya, she fears work unless it's something, um, what do you call it, interesting enough to her. Other than that, she just wants to make demands. She wants to have Eugene do what he want to do. And uh, for her and the family, 
But I'm like, girl, just like she, you know, sold a house that she said was her dream house. And she had engraved all their names on the wood prior, you know, prior to it getting covered up with more reinforcers for the uh, beams for the house and stuff. She had, I mean, come on. The kids got to be tired of moving. They don't have anything that's consistently and uh, consistently the same. You know, they need that. They need everything to go like one, two, three, A, B, C. For them to have some sense of belonging. But Toy is in the frame of mind. No, I got to make money. And if we got to get another dream house, then we just do that. But right now, we leaving this house and we selling it. I'm like, girl. Your children will hate you in the end, okay? Especially if they can't go to the same school with the friends that they have already cemented as good friends and they want to see them each and every day, okay? So, Toya's really still wor wor worrying Eugene into the ground. I guess the brother got to have a heart attack before she says or lets up and just... You know, be a wife and be content with what you got. But to me, it seems like Tori is trying to compete with uh, Jackie and um, uh, Heavenly because they both have nice mansions and whatnot. Well, I call them mansions. They kind of look like mansions. But I don't know. <laughs> it's just a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. Toy is still doing the same thing to Eugene after all of this time. Of course, um... Heavenly is running you are uh, her husband daddy all right and uh let me see simone and uh what's his name simone and uh shoot what is that man name her husband name i can't think of the man the name at the cecil cecil that's what it is because my cousin's name is cecil so i try to connect it both but yeah um Cecil and Simone is trying to still look like they working on a marriage and they end up having a lunch date or dinner date with her son Miles who I think is the oldest one looking very nice but looking very nice but you know I really thought he would have had a black woman on his shoulder but he has an Asian woman so he couldn't find no love for the black woman but his love his heart found it for the Asian woman and she seemed to be I'm, I'm going to say it. She seemed to be bossy. And I'm like, okay, y'all said she being nice. Well, she is probably playing, y'all. But that girl probably be, and she pretty much said, he has more tolerance for her than she has for him. I'm like, well, girl, do you not, not know who you're talking to? But it, it, the girl is, you know, like I said, she's Asian. But she's, she seems like she gets what she wants from their child. So I would have been looking at her like, what? You know what I'm saying? But it just is what it is. Your heart goes with who it wants to go to. But he's learning Japanese. And uh, what is it he said? He's, he's speaking a language, Japanese. And I think he's doing good with his physics. Hell, I don't know. Because it was quite boring, the whole thing. But he's definitely trying to be in school, make somewhat good passing grades. And move on. But like I said, his girlfriend, she was trying to drop dime on him that he's not doing too well in his other subjects. So I said, mm, we'll see how long that relationship lasts. Then we have, um, you know, Toya and um, Contessa talking about, you know, her and Heavenly, you know, friendship is not what it used to be. And uh, she's just tired of Heavenly putting all her personal business out on social media on her uh, YouTube page and this, that, and the third. And, of course, Tori said, well, you don't found out that Heavenly is a snake because that's what she do. She uh, builds up drama and then tries to, you know, hide her hands. But she'll also come back and say, yes, yeah, she said it. You know, like, what, what, it, what is, what's about? What is, what is it, you know? It's out there. I've said it. And what you going to do about it? So, um, they're still having that mess going on. But I wanted to say the VP... The most valuable person in this episode, I would have to say, is Quad. Quad is filming and doing a lot of positiveness with her nephew, Mason. I mean, Mason, he should have his own television show because the boy is just out, too outspoken. Too outspoken. But, you know, let the child speak. 
he may say something that you need to hear. But uh, he really wants uh, Quad to pick him up from school as well as take him. He don't like the school bus because the children evidently is too loud for him. And he, he just don't want to be Bob. <laughs> I said, boy, that passive-aggressive mentality. And she thinks he's just the cutest thing. And I'm like, well, she didn't get a chance to be a mommy because her previous husband was just too damaging for her. And he was just too verbally abusive to her. But hey, they said she got got physical with her too. But that's like allegedly. But um, she's just doing the darn thing. I love her energy. I love that she's putting family first. And she still, you know, carves out time to, you know, do, do things just for her. Now, she's not losing them streets like she used to be or whatever. She's maturing. She's growing. She knows what is important and what is just like a good time. That if you want to spend your time doing pretty much nothing, then go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Socializing on that end of the spectrum. But if you want to, you know, have a fulfilling life, you know, you have to cultivate it. You have to work on it. Right now, she's like a mom auntie, uh, which is a good thing. And, I, you know, she probably look at him like her son, even though she's say nephew. Because he is very, uh, he's very handsome. And he's very... I don't know, he just have a good spirit about himself. He's looking like he wants to be totally honest with what he's going through. And he's using his auntie to uh, express his feelings. Now, he probably have a good relationship with his grandmama, which is tall. Um, I'm sorry, with a quad and his dad's mom. So, um, I think he's going to be raised real well. But I hope and pray that um, quad finds a man and um uh, or a man mentor that can you know continue to uh shape and mold him as well but you know hey if not quad got him 10 toes that I mean that well yeah 10 toes down 10 fingers straight yeah she got him and that's a good little um a good little piece that i felt was really really entertaining how she was interacting with her nephew Okay, then we go on where it says heaven and get a free. Wait a minute. Oh, she goes to Dr. Jackie and tell, ask Dr. Jackie what's wrong with her. Because she had her uh, period in two two months or two weeks, shit, or something like, something like that. And she may think she's pregnant. I'm like, heaven, give it up. Give the ghost up, baby. No, you're not pregnant down now. You're not pregnant, baby. But uh, she goes on to tell Jackie that. She ain't really sexually active either. She don't want to do nothing. She'll do, do, do the stuff with her mouth. Meaning she gives head to her man. Which I'm like, Heavenly, did you really have to tell the whole world that, baby girl? Did you really have to say that? You know, you could have alluded to the fact, but she just went out and said it, child. She gave her man head. That's what he wants. That's what he appreciates. And that's it. <laughs> I'm like, Lord. Her, her baby girl, I hope her baby girl didn't hear that. But, you know, because that would be quite embarrassing. Very quite embarrassing. I couldn't even look at my mom and dad the same way if I was her. You know, I was like, oh, let me wait. Get, get, let me get this visual out of my head that my mom just said what she does for my dad. Oh, my goodness gracious. Ooh, yeah, send that girl off to college and pay her tuition and her room and board because Dr. Helen, Heavenly just need that house to her and her husband because it's just too much going on. Kids don't want to know all that about their parents. It's just like, ew, you know? But anyway, she's serving who she calls her daddy, which is her husband, uh, up. And he's he's liking it. Damien, he's he liking it. And he cool with it. So, And, and like I said, um, Heavenly uh, pretty much has trained him. And he know what to say around her and what not to say around her. Or if he say the wrong thing, he is asking for her forgiveness. Henpeck man is what I call him. Henpeck man. But that was pretty much it, um, guys. I am I'm I don't know, maybe I have to keep looking at it, but I don't too much like Anila because she's just too much of, uh, you know, too bossy and, and she looks down on you and I just don't like her. I really don't. And they they probably tried to replace her with the same ethnicity that uh Mariah and her husband, I think they're Indian or Persian or something like that. So they were trying to get that same type of culture back in the lineup uh, with 
I guess, having them on the show. Because the daddy or her husband, he just, I don't know. He just too much to it. And it's not in a good way. I just didn't like him. You know what I'm saying? His whole personality, his demeanor. It's almost like, do what I say, don't do what I do. And that's for the children and my wife and anybody else in the house I need to give correction to. You know, it's like, I'm busy. I'm really doing something for society. But what y'all are doing is nothing. You know, so let me do what I do. And then and, and I'll be with y'all when I get ready to be with y'all. Okay? So he pretty much takes his job very seriously. And the rest of them, they, he feels that they should just fall in line. Because they don't do what he do. And he is just more important than anything. As far as raising children. Or having this influencer type of business or career. And he's saying he checked his bank account every couple of days. Because he know his wife can get a little bit frivolous out there and he just not gonna have it so i like see that's why a child got to have her own or his own so you don't have to be worried about somebody counting coins and dollars and this that and that or what you spending which is priceless you can't even compare of raising children and making sure they good and they are formed real well and they're molded and shaped and filled with the good things of life for as far as good ethics good um characteristics good character all that you know that stuff you're supposed to have that the men seem like they don't want to put forth an effort to teach their children these things they think it's supposed to come from the mama so that mama nyla is like uh-uh i want to look fabulous i want to be able to do what i need to do we need somebody to keep these kids in tow okay so i was like both of them i'm just like mm, i'm not liking them at all but anyway that's all i had for this particular episode episode two season nine of the merit to medicine cast and it was titled of course the beauty shop okay oh yeah i forgot about heavenly head asked this man who owns 27 mortuaries in florida her hometown uh <laughs> and she don't she went in business with this guy you talking about somebody look like they were dressed from the 60s and 70s years old that you can call Superfly Man or whatever. Ooh, his hair wasn't together and that suit he had, it was dated. Child, that suit was dated like something out the 60s, 70s. You hear me? More so the 70s. I was like, where did he get this brother from? Where did they get this brother from? Child. That was a hot mess. That's the only thing I could say. It was a hot mess. He was a truly hot mess. But Thank y'all for stopping by and seeing what uh, Deb had to say about certain subjects, matters. And we had it on uh, Merit to Medicine. So hopefully y'all enjoyed and I will see y'all next video. Bye-bye.